In this video, we are going to take a look at using coordinates to prove theorems and then also compute um, perimeter and area. So this starts on page 104 in your workbook. So go ahead and look at these um, quadrilaterals here and decide which one doesn't belong and give a justification for why you made your choice. Then you can come back to the video. Um, so various different things you could have said here. Um, D, maybe you said didn't belong because it's the only one with horizontal and vertical lines instead of slanted lines. Maybe you said C didn't belong um, because it's the only one with W, X, Y, and Z as its sides. Or maybe it's the only one that looks like it has different side lengths. Maybe you said B because it's the only one that doesn't um, appear to have right angles. And maybe you said um, <clears throat> A because it's the only one that isn't just in the first quadrant. Okay, it, it seems to be in quadrants one, two, three, and four. Could have had other reasons. Those are just a couple. All right, so let's take a look at um, 14, 2. So this one says name the quadrilateral. So go ahead and plot these um, ordered pairs in your book to get a quadrilateral. So go ahead and plot 0, 0, 4, 3, 13, negative 9, <clears throat> and 9, negative 12. Should end up with a figure that looks like this. And so what type of quadrilateral is this? So maybe from looking at it. So let's take a look at a review of the types of quadrilaterals that we're looking at today. So we've got a rectangle that has four right angles, a rhombus that has four equal sides, and then a square that has both um, four right angles and four equal sides. Okay, so rectangle has the four equal angles, all of them being right angles. Rhombus has equal sides. And then a square is a combination of both the rectangle with the right angles and a rhombus with the equal sides. So let's take a look back at our shape here. So probably um, when you're looking at it, you assume that it's a rectangle. Okay, so by looking at it, it looks like it's a rectangle. So how do we actually explain or show our reasoning here? So in order to be a rectangle, we would want to show that the sides are opposite reciprocals of each other, because that would mean that these two lines are perpendicular and would mean that they create a 90 degree angle here. So let's go ahead and just draw on this slope triangle and count the slope. So the rise here is three, the run is four. So the slope of this one is three fourths. Then we can look at the slope of this next one and I'm just gonna move to a straight line here. Okay, so we can draw on the vertical um, and horizontal change and then go ahead and count that. So you can count it, like physically count the boxes here. You can also look at the Y values. So negative nine to three. So that's gonna be a difference of 12. And then for the width here, you could look at the X's. So the four goes all the way over to 13. So four to 13 is nine. And this slope is going down. Okay, so this one is a negative slope. So this is going to be negative 12 over 9, which will simplify both of these divide by 3 to negative 4 thirds. Okay, so we've got the slope here being 3 fourths, the slope here being negative 4 thirds. And then we could look at the slopes of these other sides as well. Okay, this one um, has a rise of 3 and a run of four. So this one is going to have a slope of three fourths. And then this one, we could count again. <clears throat> um, and we're gonna get 12 and nine again. And then this one is going down. Whoops, that's the 12. 
Okay, so a rise of 12 and a run of nine, and then this is going down. So the slope here is again going to be negative 12 over nine, which we know simplifies from this one to negative four thirds. All right, so then we have all those slopes, okay, and three fourths and negative four thirds are opposite reciprocals of each other. So then that means um, the angles are 90 degrees because those lines are perpendicular. So that makes 90 degree angles. All right, then um, in order to find the perimeter and the area, we're going to want to find the length of these sides. Okay, we already know now. Um, that these angles are 90 degree angles. What that does for us um, for perimeter and area is it helps us that for area, we want to multiply um, base times height and those need to have um, 90 degree angles. So those need to be perpendicular, the base and the height. So let's find the length of each of these. And we can do that by using this little slope triangle and doing Pythagorean theorem. So here we have a leg of three and four. So just up here, I'm going to say c squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So c squared is equal to 25. And then we would square root that and we get 5 for this length. Which then we know this length is also 5 since it has that same slope triangle, the 3 and the 4 legs. So then we can figure out this one using the slope triangle of 12 and 9. Okay, so I'll just do that down here. So for this one, we would be saying c squared equals 12 squared plus 9 squared, which is 144 and um, 81. So 144 plus 81 is 225. So that's our c squared equals 225. So we'll square root that and we get 15 for this side length and then 15 for this one since it's got that same exact slope triangle. So for perimeter, we add up all the sides. So we will do 5 plus 12 plus 5 plus 12. And so you'll get 34 units for the perimeter. And then for the area, um, you would do base times height. And so you can use the 5 and the 15 as the base and the height since those are perpendicular to each other. So 5 times um, 15 gives you 75 units um, squared for the area. So we know it's a rectangle because the slopes were opposite reciprocals, giving us those right angles. And then we did the perimeter by adding up all those sides, area by multiplying them. So now I want you to go back to um, your warm up on page 144, that 14.1. And I want you to do this on each of these shapes. So we'll do the first one together, this A, and then I'll let you figure out B, C, and D by yourself and come back to the video. So let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> um, so again, we want to do the slopes to figure out what type of um, quadrilateral it is. So let's go ahead and count these slopes. So this is up two over two. Oops. Okay, so we get two over two here. So the slope for CD is two over two, which is one, and this is a positive slope. Okay, then this triangle over here, we get um, two and two. So the slope here, now this one is going down. So this one is going to be a negative one slope. Okay, because it'll be negative two over two. So rise over run. So this one here, okay, a two over two as well and going down. So this one has a slope of negative one. And then this one here going up with a rise of two and a run of one. So that one, two divided by two is going to be one again. Now, one and negative one, okay, are opposite reciprocals of each other if we think of it as one over one. 
So then we'll do the opposite and we'll flip this. So it'll still be negative um, one. So the slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. So that gives us right angles here. Okay, so we know all of these are right angles. And now we need to find the length of each side. So let's go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you'll notice, all of these little slope triangles are all the same. Okay, they're all a two by two triangle. So once we figure it out for one, we'll have it for all of the sides. So we have two squared plus two squared. So two squared is four plus four gives us eight for our C squared. So the length of this side is the square root of eight units long, and you can type that in your calculator if you would like the decimal. And so that's going to be 2.83 um, for the decimal. Now that's going to be the same for every side, because if we redid the Pythagorean theorem, we'd get the exact same thing. So you can either put square root 8 or you can put 2.3. So with all of the sides being the same length, that also makes it a rhombus. So since it's a rectangle from the opposite reciprocal slopes, giving us 90 degree angles, and all the sides are the same, the shape is a square. And then let's do the perimeter which is adding up all these sides. Now, all the sides are the same, so I could just take four and multiply it by one side instead of doing square root eight plus itself four times. So if I do um, four times the square root of eight as a decimal, that's, whoops, 11.3 units. And then area, okay, area is base times height. So the base um, and height in this are both square root 8. So if we multiply square root 8 times square root 8, we get square root of 64. And the square root of 64 is just 8, and this will be units squared. So go ahead and do that on your other three shapes. Okay, look for the slopes. Look for the side lengths and then do the perimeter and the area of each one. Then you can come back to the video to check your work. All right, so the slopes um, that we get in these ones. So here are the slopes that you should have gotten up two over one, positive two for both of these, negative two because this will be down two and over one since this is going down. Um, one for these two shorter sides, down one over one for these longer slides. And then in D, since you have a horizontal and a vertical, the horizontal lines have a slope of zero. The vertical have undefined slopes. And we know that that means that these are 90 degree angles because a vertical and a horizontal are by definition perpendicular. Okay, then these ones, negative one and one are also opposite reciprocals, so we did get right angles here. And then two and negative two are not opposite reciprocals. Remember, the opposite reciprocal of two would be negative one half. So these are not 90 degree angles, and we can see that looks um, pretty obvious that those are not 90 degree angles. So then when you found the side lengths, remember to do the Pythagorean theorem for each of those slope triangles. Okay, so the rise was two, the run was one. Um, and then let me write in if you just left it in square root form. So this would have been square root five for these ones. All would have been square root five. Um, this one here would have been square root two. And this one um, would have been square root eight. So square root eight for these two longer ones, square root two for the two shorter ones. If you left it in exact form, and D, it's nice because you can just count them. <clears throat> so you got two on each side there. Um, so this shape that we got here had all the sides being equal. So this one was a rhombus. 
This one just had the 90 degree angles and the sides weren't the same. So this one was a rectangle. This one had both 90 degree angles and equal sides. So this one is a square. So then you could have gone ahead and um, done the perimeter by adding up all of the sides okay, and gotten something pretty similar to these answers off by a little bit, depending on how you round it. If you round it to the nearest 10th, like this middle one or to the nearest hundredth, like I did on this first one. Um, and then area, we should have gotten four units squared for each of them. Now you could have been off by a little bit if you hadn't done exact form. Um, but if you did exact form, so like this one was square root eight times square root two. And so then that would give you square root 16, which is exactly four. But if you had used the decimal version, you would have gotten a little bit different there. And then I do want to talk a little bit about this rhombus. So in case you've forgotten the formula for finding area of a rhombus, how you do it is you multiply the diagonals. So two times four and you divide by two. Okay, so area of a rhombus is diagonal one times diagonal two and then you divide by two. But let's say you didn't, didn't remember that. Okay, so you could find the area of these triangles. Okay, so you could do the top triangle here. Has a base of two and a height of two. So if we were to find the area of that triangle, we would do base times height divided by two. So then you would get four divided by two, which is two. So the area of this triangle here is two. And then the area of this bottom triangle, it's the same size. So the area of this bottom triangle is also two. And then you could have just added those together to get that four. So that's one way if you forgot the area formula. All right, then um, here is a cool down for you. Be sure you try that. And if you're struggling um, with the cool down, make sure you reach out to your teacher.